Good afternoon guys, this is Chris at DNGRMS Photography and this video I'm going to do today is going to be about a panorama that I'm doing for a Christmas present actually um, and the last panoramic video I did or how to create a panorama in Photoshop, the last video I did was had a lot of other content in it so I thought I'd just try and get one that was literally just about using the merge to panorama tool in Photoshop. So. The photo set that I've got, um, I got up at 5 o'clock in the morning about four days ago uh, and we got some um, sunset photos from the top of my auntie's farm um, and then also some uh, dewy ones as well on the grass but um, it's up at the top of my auntie's farm, she's got uh, a hill that overlooks, overlooks uh, all of the little village that we've got over here um, and yes, 5 o'clock in the morning, got up I uh, got out there, I've already stacked all my images up, so if we can just have a quick look through. Uh, these are the images that we got. Uh, this is how it looked right off the bat when I got there. Um, I thought I'd take some photos just in the bank to see if I could, um, well, just to, in case anything went wrong. So these are the photos I got straight away. Um, and then as we get into them, got to, let's create, open this uh, next stack up. Uh, you'll see it's starting to get a little bit brighter. I'm just playing with the exposure, trying to get the right exposure. Um, let's close that stack down. And the stack I'm going to use uh, is this one here. At least I think this is the one I'm going to use. I might use one of them. I'm still a little bit uh, unsure with which one I'm going to do. So I'm probably going to do two or three panoramas and pick pick the best one. But for the purpose of this video, this here is the, is the set of photos I'm going to use. Um, the setup I had, um, we had as the first of the stack, as this one here. So it goes all the way across. So actually, a little bit out of out of order because that one is supposed to be in the middle. Um, but for the purpose of uh, this stack here, let's have a look at the the, the information. Uh, one one hundred of a second uh, at f nine. Uh, ISO 400 and I was using my 50mm uh, at 1.8 um, uh, sorry not at 1.8 at f9 of course not 1.8 so I was using my 50mm 50, 50 1.8 uh, lens basically because I haven't got another lens which is as sharp as this one um, I would have used my kit lens or I did use my kit lens from another one um, but the sharpness and clarity out of this lens I was really impressed with so I haven't got a, a a wide angle or uh, something that you might typically use for a landscape so I just use my 50mm. Um, so what we're going to do is get all these stitched together in a panorama. Um, I've already edited them, uh, if we have a quick look at the develop module. We had um, I had all these set up so there's these 11 photos here. Um, I've basically synced them all but I use this center photo because obviously this is the one that's this is the one that's going to um, be the uh, focus point of the of the panorama when we finish it. Uh, I use this one to to edit and get exactly how I wanted it, and then synced across all of them. So basically, all we did here, I dropped the exposure down a little bit just to just to hold back on the uh, on the sun. Uh, if we go up to where it was, it's just a little bit bright. So I'll just pull that back to uh, nearly three quarters of a stop down. Uh, push the recovery slider up uh, just to make, retain some detail around the sun. Uh, left the blacks in the fill light where we were. Uh, the contrast I moved up a tiny bit. Uh, if, I, if I pull it back to where it was, um, you'll see it, it doesn't really need much, but I just want a little bit more contrast up in the sky and the clouds. So that went up to around 34. Uh, there. Um, Bump the vibrant, I love vibrant, uh, I love the nice vibrant colours on this. And now the tone curve, uh, rather than going for a point curve here and just changing it straight away, um, I pulled the highlights back. Um, so this is just all the little highlights around the sun. So I pulled that back to darken it out to try and make that pop a little bit more. And I actually pushed the darks up, so I lightened the darks uh, and left the shadows and um, pulled, the, pulled the lights back in there as well. Um, but uh, yeah, just put the darks up, and that just brought out a little bit of detail down here. Um, you can see all the all the fog, uh, morning fog, coming out from there. So it just brought out a little bit of that detail down there. Um, saturation, 
I want to try and keep the blue in the sky up here, so you're going from the orange all the way through the colours and the tones to the blue, so uh, I push the saturation and the luminance um, up on the blue. Just got a text, no. Nope. Um, and just did a very, very small bit of sharpening, masked it off to 79, if I hold that down there, you can see what the, uh, the lines I was masking off, you don't really need to sharpen too much on a landscape in my opinion, because clouds should be nice and soft. Uh, and then just push the, the luminance noise resist, resist, uh, reduction up a very, very small amount uh, just to smooth out any possible pixelation in that. Uh, it shouldn't be too much of a problem because obviously when we've created the panorama it's going to be massive uh, and there's no way I'm going to be printing it out that high so it's going to be shrunk down anyway so the pixelation shouldn't be a problem. I haven't used um, lens correction here um, because if we click it on it doesn't actually create that much difference so I just left that off. Um, for the sake of synchronising across all three of them, oh sorry, all 11 of the photos. Uh, right, okay, so once I'd done that, I selected all the way across all the photos, so all the way up to here, uh, and then hit sync, um, and then selected which of the ones, uh, which of the settings I'd changed. So I'd changed the exposure, I'd changed the highlights, uh, I hadn't touched the fill light, I don't know why I left that on, the same with the blacks. Uh, I had changed the tone curve, if you remember, um, the clarity I hadn't touched, I left that on sharpening, I'd done a tiny little bit. Uh, I had done the treatment for the colour, so you remember the blues. Uh, lens correction was left on because that was uh, left on from the O2 Masters tennis tournament that I'd just done, so I didn't click that off. Um, and then I just hit synchronise to synchronise all the way across those. So, one thing I'm going to do just quickly before I take these into Photoshop. Uh, is I'm a little bit worried that now I've stacked, what, the, the way I've stacked these uh, is I selected the images that were in the uh, in the sequence that I took uh, and then so that I could reference them on the, on the top of the stack I just made sure that I had, once I'd selected these, I made sure I had the centre one, so the uh, the actual sunrise selected and then stacked it because uh, I, th I thought that would pop that at the beginning and it has but unfortunately it seemed to throw it out of sync um, so what I'm going to do with the ones that I'm going to use, so this one here I'm just going to unstack those which is command shift G so I'm going to unstack those and you'll see that's put that back in the centre and we're going to select all of those that's all our images, is there any more? No? so that's all our images there um, and we're basically just going to edit that in Photoshop and merge to HDR Pro. So if we right click, edit in, so rather than editing in Photoshop, if you go down, we're going to merge to Panorama in Photoshop. So if we click on that now, it's going to pull all those in, across into Photoshop. It's going to ask us to some options. Uh, so minimize that, get that out of the way. Uh, Photoshop is already open, so it should just take a second to pop up. There we go. Right, so we've got some, we've got some options here on this. Um, on this menu here. Um, auto. Nice and simple, it's just going to look at all the images and it's going to pick the best one. Uh, it's usually going to pick perspective or, or cylindrical. Um, more often than not when I've been doing this it seems to pick perspective and then you get that nice well, the, the bow tie effect. Um, so it, it merges out and you get the, the real, in, uh, real idea that you've swept across from a centre point uh, rather than panned. Um, it's difficult to explain, but if you if you click on it and, and run a panorama through perspective, you'll understand what I mean. It's li it looks like you've swept across, so it's got that uh, the, the nice curve to it. Cylindrical basically gets away from that curve, uh, so it, it tries to stretch and skew um, and transform the image, so it's a slightly more square shape, uh, and that's the one we're going to use today. So if we're going to click on cylindrical, here's a, here are all the source files. Uh, just for reference, uh, Spherical um, does pretty much the same thing as um, Perspective, but seems to squeeze it in. Collage I've never used, and Reposition um, it doesn't tend to work because you've done a sweep, so images won't match up. Um, so Reposition seems to be a, a, a lot more for panning, so if you're taking a photo here, then a photo there, then a photo there, then you can, then you can reposition and merge them up. But for this one we're going to use cylindrical, and this is where I'm going to have a cup of tea. So, we've got all our images selected in here, we're going to blend all the images together, we're not going to have any vignette removal, we don't need any of that, we're not going to have any geometric distortion correction, that's for if you're using a fish eye, 
Um, if you're going to use a fisheye for a um, panorama, I'm not sure how it would turn out, um, but apparently uh, Photoshop will sort of that for you. So once we've got that, what it's going to do is going to bring all these images in. Uh, it's going to line them all up, so make them all in um, what's the word? I've forgotten the word, but it's going to make them all uh, lined up across the uh, length of the panorama, um, and then it's going to merge them all together. It's going to make masks uh, to to mask off the parts of the photo that we don't want. So if we just click OK here, and it is going to take a little bit of a while, so I'm going to have a quick cup of tea. See, it's pulling, them, pulling all the images in there. And what we're going to do, we're just going to put this screen flow on pause, and we'll come back uh, a little bit later when it's when it's popped in. So here we go, up to screen flow, and okay. So um, I've drunk most of my tea now, uh, but Photoshop is crunching through this uh, panorama, and um, it's got a fair way. Um, it's aligned all the layers uh, in its memory or whatever. Um, register is the word I was looking for, so it's making all the all the uh, photos in register, um, and it's now just creating a panorama. And what we're going to see when you, when it pops up is a nice big long uh, file uh, with all the files lined up and then merged across as well, um, not merged, merged into each other. So uh, it makes a mask and just lines them all up. Uh, so let's have a quick look once it's created that and. Um, yeah, we'll see how we get on. What I want to do in here once it's done um, is just sort the horizon now, make sure the horizon is absolutely flat because I've got a feeling that it might be just off um, and then just sort out some content to wear fill around the edges just to make sure I've got a, a large as fire as I can. Um, and one thing that I forgot to mention in when I was in Lightroom is that all these photos were taken in manual. Um, I took a rough meter reading uh, of the sunrise when I got there um, and basically just took the exposure up a little bit um, because if you overexpose or if you expose correctly it's just going to all blow out um, so one one hundredth of a second nice and quick and it just really keeps the colours in um, I probably could have gone a little bit further to be honest if you watch if you look out, dear me, if you were uh, taking a photo of, uh, of the sun you want to be shooting at, I don't know, 2,000th of a second and it really snaps and captures the colour um, and it's very much the same when you're doing this sunset you want to try and try and really cap that colour straight away, you don't want to let it let it uh, bleed into the rest of the rest of the picture. Um, so it's just going to be blending the layers now, you'll see it's got these layers here and you'll see it's not a cylindrical one so it's actually blown it out to make sure that it's as straight as it can. Um, I think if you pop back through and you have a look at my other panorama video, that one was done uh, with perspective um, so you will see a more bow, of a bow tie effect. Um, and then down here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven photos and you can see they're all stitching together um, across the panorama. So it's creating the layer mask at the moment. Um, that's just going to find out which parts line up and it's going to merge out the parts that it doesn't need. And uh, then what we're going to do, all this outside edge, all the extra space around the outside here, uh, we're going to see if we can fill with some content aware um, see how that gets on, uh, just to allow me a little bit more space top and bottom when I do do a crop uh, and then I think you can just see that this very looks like it's, it's actually um, sloping down towards the right hand side so I think I didn't quite get the horizon right on this uh, it was shot up on the top of the hill where I took the photo there is a big plinth with uh, it's like a big um, a compass or a sundial on the top um, so I was able to put a small tripod on there and just rotate the camera around on that, but the tripod itself hasn't got a, um, a spirit level on the top of it, so I had to use the camera, so I was, I was pretty much having to guess how flat it was and how, how square it was, so I was just sweeping around on that, and that's not too bad actually, we can pretty much sort that one out uh, once it's finished. It might take a second just to transform that and, 
and spin it around so it's level. One thing I will just quickly mention, if you want to go out and take a photo of sunrise, uh, and I do massively urge you to because it's an incredible experience, um, I was talking to uh, my friend Ryan, uh, Ryan Connors, she's Kill Kenny Cat on Um and we were talking about how early you should go out. Uh, well, I went out an hour before sunset, and sunset, uh, oh, sorry, sorry, sunrise. Sunrise on this particular day was 6.42, something like that. So I was out at 5.42. I went out there at 5.42 and I got these images all the way up from 5.42 till just after because you'll see the sunrise here. This is the actual sunrise one. So this was taken at about um, 6.45, something like that. It was actually really, really accurate. So if you can work out, just um, you can get an app on your iPhone that tells you when the sun rises and the sunset. So if you work out an hour before that, uh, and then just photo, uh, and just shoot from that. Um, one thing that I will say is that you won't know when to stop, you'll just keep going and you'll say, oh, I don't really want to stop taking photos. Uh, it's incredible. Right, so here we go, we've got this image, let's just make this a bit smaller so it's manageable. Um, so you'll see here we've got the horizon is just dropping down. Um, before we can do anything to this, we just need to merge these layers together. So at the top here, make sure they're all selected, you'll see all the masks as well. Um, make sure they're all selected, click up here, and we're going to merge layers, or merge visible, doesn't matter which. Uh, we don't want to flatten, um, because we want to retain this transparency here, because that's one. That's the part we're going to fill in a minute. Uh, so if you flatten it, that'll go white, uh, you just lose a little bit of, well in my head, you lose a little bit of quality when you're then uh, content aware film. So this is going to be another occasion where I'm going to pause the video, because merging layers on this scale is going to take a while. Okay, so merge layers here. We're going to click. I'm going to have a cup of tea. Um, I've not got much left now. Um, and pause my video. Here we go. So it's merging layers. It's actually crunching through quite quickly, that one. Here we go. So I'm back. And if you have a look, um, you should have seen a absolute finger snap uh, and all the lines that were um, visible, that was between the, between the masks, uh, has now gone and we've just left with a single layer. Um, now what we're going to do, and we've got a lot of space over here, so I'm probably going to crop into it just a little bit, um, uh, but we want to try and keep as much of the detail down here, so what we're going to do before we rotate, if I rotated that now I'd lose some of the corners, so I'm just going to make the camera size a slightly bit smaller, uh, larger. Uh, we're going to keep it on relative here, and we're just going to do 5%, 5% both ways. Here we go, so 5%. It's going to make it 5% larger than it already is. Tick, tick, tick. I hope this isn't going to take ages as well. Shouldn't do. There we go. Oh, no. Nope. I'm distracted by my cup of tea again. There we go. So that's just going to leave me a bit of space just to maneuver this around. So, first things first, let's get this lined up correctly. Um, what we're going to do is I'm just going to drag down a guide line across the sun there and we're going to rotate this until the horizon is a little bit more level. Now that will do, this is pretty much done by eye because obviously you've got the um, the horizon isn't going to be completely flat but the horizon itself needs to be level. Um, I know that sounds a little hypocritical but um, Obviously we've got undulations and everything in there. Um, there go, so I'm going to end up with a big transform again. Uh, should I pause the video? It's going to look like I'm going to need to pause this one again because this is going to take quite a while to transform this. So uh, we've set that one across there. That's the line that I've set. I've just dragged that down from the ruler. Um, set that across just a little uh, a guide. Um, you've got the undulations in here and everything, but uh, the actual horizon itself is a lot more flat now. So. Let's pause the video again and let Photoshop do this transform. Thank you. Okay, so actually crunched through that very, very quickly um, and we are back. So uh, how we can get rid of this, if we hold down the Alt key now, sorry, Command key, uh, we're just going to drag that ruler off and it'll uh, clear that out. And you'll see that we've now got all this extra space around the outside. Now we can sort that out a little bit with some content aware fill. Um, I'd like to retain as much information around the edge as I can, and obviously we've got 
um, some space up here which I think content aware fill will be able to sort out. So first off we just need to make a selection. Um, easiest way to do this, we hold down the command button and click on the layer. It's going to do a selection around that layer. Uh, but we don't want to select the layer, we actually want to fill it outside it. But before we do that, we want to make sure that there's a nice seamless fill. We're going to go to our modify selection. We're going to contract it by a couple of pixels. Let's do three. So three pixels smaller. Uh, it's, it's a massive, massive file, so three pixels is very, very small indeed. And then what we're going to do is we're going to feather that. So we're going to feather it by two pixels. There we go. And now we're going to invert that selection. Inverse there. So now we've got all this outside edge um, selected. Now, content aware fill now. I've not done this yet, so I'm not sure how it's going to cope with um, some of the information down here. Look, where it's got uh, a few more um, man made uh, buildings and things down there, but I'm pretty sure it's going to cope pretty well up at the sky and up around the top of the tree. Uh, so, what might happen is that we'll we might just end up cropping into here. Uh, so we'll see how we get on with this. Um, so, edit. And we want to fill that layer there. We'll fill that selection. And we're going to fill and we're going to use content aware. I'm just going to click OK and let it chunder through at that. Hopefully I'm going to have enough memory left on the back. <laughs> so uh, I could be pausing it and coming back going, no, it didn't work. Um, so in which case I'll have to make this file a little bit smaller. Um, I don't want to do that now because I'd rather get the information sorted at this scale and then make it smaller um, rather than adding content to wear on a, on a smaller pixelation, uh, pixel uh, DPI. It's just, just about the quality again. I'd rather fill it at this resolution and then make it smaller um, than add in a less resolution content aware film. It's, it makes sense in my head, I'm really struggling to explain it. Um, okay, so this is definitely another pause situation and uh, cross your fingers for me that um, I'm going to have enough RAM to, to finish this one off. Not done it. Not enough RAM. So what we're going to do, uh, click OK on this, um, this is where I'm going to have to start making a little bit of a decision about how large I want this to be. Um, so we're going to go to image size. Um, now, it's more about the document size than the pixel size. So, we want 300 dpi because it's going to be printed. Uh, I want to constrain the proportions, and I would like it. Um, let's say a good two foot. So, if we select inches in here, uh, we want it at least 24 inches wide. Um, Let's go a little bit bigger actually. Let's go 36, so 3 foot wide, and that's going to be 9 inches high. That'll be all right, about right. Um, and that's something that I can then make a little bit smaller if I need to. So if click OK at that, and then hopefully, oh, it's now going to take forever to do the image size. Uh, and then hopefully, this is going to be a slightly more manageable um, size for it to do some content aware fill around the edge. Um, so we'll see how we get on with that one. Okay, here we go. Um, it looks pretty, pretty funky actually. Um, apart from this bit down at the bottom, um, which we can sort out, or at least probably just crop up. Um, but you'll see if we zoom in now, we should have a nice smooth line between the two. That's not that smooth. Okay, so we're still not that bad, which is a bit of a pain. Um, you can see how that has filled in the sky really really well. Um, down at the bottom we're not too good. There's a little bit of it. it's not quite sure what it's going to uh, what the content should be down here as you can see so it's kind of put uh, almost looks like a bit of a reflection um, of the top. Uh, this bit here actually looks quite cool because it looks like there's some fog with a reflection of the sky. Um, but what we can do is the part we want or the part I want uh, is something like that. Uh, how much of the tree do we want there? We want quite a lot of that over there. Uh, and there, that, I think, 
Let me just pull that down a fraction, get that top of the tree off there. Uh, that is what I was after. Something along the lines of that. Okay. Um, so we crop it, crop it at that selection there. That should be my final image. We'll hit the tick. There we go. So uh, the only thing we need to do, um, I'm just going to run around uh, the edge here and just smooth out that. Uh, I will probably just use a small spot healing brush, see how that sorts it out. Should be too much of a problem doing that. See how it copes. Yeah, that's perfect. So we'll just oops, undo that. That's not very good. So we'll just run all the way across that line. Makes it a lot easier when you've got a Wacom tablet. Da ching Let it chew through this. And do the same down at the bottom. Uh, same over on this side. Is there a line over here? Can't see a line over here. There's definitely a line there. Let me look. Sort of that. And all the way across here. Now, this bit down at the bottom here, I'm just going to black out. I'm going to black and darken all this out here uh, just to fade it out to nothing. Just let it chew through that bit. Come across. That sun is incredible. Now, this is what I was talking about with uh, not knowing when to stop taking photos because this was a good. Uh, what time was this? It was around five minutes after the sunrise. So it's really impressive to see the sun just creeping through. You can just it just pops up. I was just about to leave, and then the sun literally just popped up, and it it climbs so rapidly up here. You literally do not know when to stop taking photographs. Um, have we missed anything? Over, any lines over here? Yeah, there's that line there. So we'll just do that on a spot here as well. All the way down, I've missed that completely, haven't I? I'll try that again. Uh, oh, not that one actually. All the way down. Spot the brush there. Right, and that bit down there. It's just caught a little bit here, which I'm not quite sure about. That bit there. There we go. Okay, so all along the bottom, I'm just going to have a brush. I'm going to get a nice large soft brush. Uh, a little bit larger than that. Ten is a bit small. Seventy is a bit small. Oh, yeah, that's better. So we've got more than five meters, a little bit bigger, two hundred. Okay, so uh, rather than picking the black, I'm going to colour select. So if I hold down the Alt button, I'm going to get my eyedropper, um, and I'm going to use this colour here, which is probably black. Um, but if you look up on the info. The top here, uh, the info. It's nearly black. Look, uh, and it's it's. I don't want to particularly change that. So we're just going to scoot across here, and as we get closer to the content aware fill bit that it's done, we'll see. We can just blend. We can just blend that bit out. Smaller, and smaller, a bit more manageable. Just blend that bit out. And just make the opacity a little bit smaller so we can darken, make a fraction more, go to 30, just so we can make these bits here a little bit softer. There we go. Darken that out, darken that out. Right, and that is my final sunrise panorama. That's going to be my Auntie's Christmas present, uh, taken from the top of her farm. So, thank you very much guys, thanks for watching, I hope this was uh, helpful to those of you who want to make a panorama, and I cannot recommend it more, popping out uh, an hour before sunrise, so just have a quick look on your um, quick look on your iPhone, and there's plenty of apps around there that will tell you what when the sun rises around your area. Um, an hour before your sunrise, get out there, find a nice quiet spot, um, if you've got a tripod, that'd be great because then you can keep it exactly uh, in line. Otherwise, take it in portrait, ding, 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 run all the way across, uh, and make sure that all those photos that you've taken are taken in manual so you've got the same exposure 
um, on each photograph and then pop them into Lightroom, do some editing and then merge to Panorama in Photoshop. Uh, thank you very much for watching and um, once this has been printed and framed I might just pop, in, pop up a picture underneath this um, video or hopefully the link on my blog as well. Okay, thank you very much guys and uh, I shall see you later. Take care.